Hi, and welcome, everybody. So happy to have you here for our Art Toolkit demo. Um, just so thrilled. I'm Maria Coriel Martin, founder of Art Toolkit, and I'm so happy to be joined here today by Jane Madey, wonderful illustrator, sketcher, artist, journaler. And Jane, you are sharing a demo, journaling moments of joy, and everything about your artwork is joyful. When I look at these lively, playful images, and it's just been a, a pleasure to see. So thank you for being here with us. Oh, well, thank you for asking me. Yeah, and you, we have featured your book. Maybe you can hold it up. My copy's at our Art Toolkit shop, this okay. beautiful book, um, How to my Journal. Uh-huh. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, it's all about my journaling um, process, how you can journal. The, I can't really flip it through, but how you can keep a journal like I do. And I go through um, instructions on how to draw and how to do lettering and, and compose a journal page. Because what I do, I have a daily journal practice. These are some of my journals from this is last year. I went through three. And um, let's see. And every day I just draw, draw my day, all the things that I do and see. And what I like to do, this is a, from a trip that I took out to your neck of the woods. This was in Oregon. Mm. Um, what, what my practice is, is I look for glimmers. And everybody's heard about triggers. And triggers are a negative thing. And that is something that sets off negative feelings within you. A glimmer is the opposite of that. That is all about um, finding moments in your day that give you a brief moment of joy. Mm. And it can be something really simple. You know, this morning I saw two blue jays on my back porch and they were gathering stuff for a nest and I watched them fly into the tree to build their nest. Or, you know, my husband made these yummy muffins for, for breakfast Anything like that is a glimmer. And when you get in the habit of looking for glimmers, it becomes a, hammer, a, a habit through your whole day. Whatever you do, you start noticing those little positive moments. And that helps you put aside, you know, there's, there's a lot of negativity and turmoil out there right now. And it helps you focus on the small good things in your own little world. Oh, I just love that. I mean, it resonates with, um, I think it's Ross Gay's book of delights where, you know, you start noticing the little delights around you. I, I have a personal habit for years too, of in the evening, sharing with my family, just beautiful things. Sometimes it's one, sometimes it's three, but kind of that yeah. focus and, and drawing them, illustrating them takes it that step further of, of building your practice of attention. Um, we used to do that when my kids were little at dinner, we would say, you know, well, what is a good thing that yeah, happened today? Yeah. And it helped them, you know, it helped them focus on that. Can Can you share a little bit of your background of what brought you to art? Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've always been an artist. That's always what I wanted to do. And I've been very fortunate. I was... Um, when I was in high school, I was part of a program. It was part of a work study program. And so when I was 14, I actually started work as an illustrator. And I ended up at the University of Florida. I was a scientific illustrator while I was still in high school. I got school credit for it and I could leave. And I, and I went to work and could discover early on that that's what I wanted for my life. And so then I went to art school and I was very fortunate to be um, headhunted by Hallmark. They came and visited the school and so they hired me then. And so that was a really good grounding. I call that like getting a master's degree because we had a lot of training. They brought teachers in and, you know, I was surrounded fresh out of school I was surrounded by some of the best artists in the country were working there mm. and so I was just really fortunate to get off to a really good start and yeah. Yeah. and so then when I had kids then I stopped working and, and went freelance and started to work from home but I I had that really good base to go from 
And since then, I've I've done a lot of um, you know, I I write the books and illustrate and all of that kind of thing. Mm, mm. And then so much of it's that practice of yeah, in my own experience also of art of do you do enough of it and your voice develops and you do it every practice. day. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Even, even in a few minutes. Well, today you've offered to share with us a little bit of your process and maybe we could bring up your desk and you could share some of your sketches and um, okay. we might take a look at drawing tools and I uh, would love to see sort of what's in your kit. Let's see, I'll pull up your desk here. Okay, let's get the camera straight. So yeah. there, how's that? Is that good? I think so. Let me, there we go. Oh, beautiful. Oh, and look, National Pet Day. Aren't those darling? <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, so this is, are you getting an echo? Did I mess up the sound? You sound great. And I'll just mention to all our viewers, we're so thrilled to have you here. It's been really fun seeing where everyone is calling in from. And I'll be keeping an eye on the chat too. So if there's any questions, um, uh, drop them in the chat. And I think now might be a good time to mention, Jane, maybe you could put your book on your desk that Jane has really generously offered a little giveaway for today. And for the giveaway, um, there'll be a little note in the chat about this in just a minute. Our outreach coordinator, here it is, is putting a note in. If you enter the word glimmer, you'll be automatically entered to win a copy of uh, Jane's book, and we'll be announcing the winner near the end of our demo. So again, the, the word to type in, you just need to type it in once, is Glimmer, G-L-I-M-M-E-R. So um, thank you. All right. <laughs> okay. Let's get that back there. Um, so I guess what I should start by talking about is um, the products that I use. People always ask about that. So I've got my, this is my art toolkit palette. I put one of my stickers on there. Oh, it's one of yours, it's darling. Look at <laughs> yeah. that. Oh, I love it. I love foxes. So I've got my palette and I've got my little swap sheet so that I know what everything is. And I've added some extra of the little, little magnetic pans because mm -hmm. this was a mixing tray over in mm -hmm. this area. Mm -hmm. And these are almost all Daniel Smith paints I like those so I've got that and oops sorry about that um this is my this is my art toolkit that I that I take with me I like to travel and I like to meet up with friends and I always take my journal with me so I've got my toolkit Oh, here. And and one second, you added a nice little shoulder strap using our little uh, extra loops. That's very cool. Yeah, this is, you can just order extra straps off um, Amazon and those little loops were there. And so this way, I'm in a group where we do plein air sketching. So I can just carry it with me out into the mountains or whatever. And this is perfect because it's really lightweight. That's what I really need right now. So I've usually got a little sketchbook in there and um, I've got a fountain pen. Oh, and, and this and is a people are probably going to be curious. You might have to tell us a little more about your fountain pen, maybe the um the kind or size nib. It looks okay, beautiful. Okay, this is this is a pelican one and it's a fine point mm -hmm. nib. I like pelican and I like I don't know how to say it, but it looks like to swibby. Twisby, I think. Yeah. Twis yeah. Twisby, is that it? Yeah, I think Those so. are the only ones that I found that they don't um, clog up in my bag. They just mm. write when I'm ready to write. And this is um, an eraser from Tombow. It's a click eraser. Mm -hmm. And I use fine liners. This is a Unipin fine liner, but I also I use Pigma Microns as well. And this is a black wing pencil, which you I am a cat protector too. There, <laughs> yes, I am so into these pencils. These are the best drawing pencil ever. They are so great. And um, this is a Futunosuke pen. It's it's got a brush nib. Mm -hmm. 
I think in your last video, when you were talking to John Muir Laws, he had one of these. Mm -hmm. And this is the little ruler. Mm -hmm. And then for brushes, normally my palette would be in here, but it's out because I'm going to be using it. For my brushes, I like, you can get um, both this kind that the cap becomes the handle or... I will use, um, where is it? A water brush mm, like yeah. this. Yeah, both are handy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just depends on what I'm going to be doing and what I want to carry. And I've got my little mister for the palette. And this is to put water in the water brush. Yeah. And then the other thing I've got in here is um, this is a folding water container you see it it, un, it folds flat and then it um mm -hmm. yeah, unfolds. Yeah. and they actually they sell these as travel drinking cups yep yeah, yeah, those are very they, handy uh-huh they sell collapsible ones that are made for painting but the drinking cup ones are actually lighter to carry i discovered that so put all that back in there so that's my kit that I take out with me when I'm going out and about. Oh, thank you for the tour. So, <laughs> yeah, so let's see. So move that down just a little tad so that you can see that better. So today, what I thought we would do, let me just get a drink of water. Oh, and look at the little drawing about you getting ready to, to join us today. <laughs> yeah, all ready to go. <laughs> Uh, you know, when I was little, I, I, um, for me, like a lot of what I use art for was like drawing out my emotions too. I would always have my sketchbook next to my bed and just kind of use it to noodle around and, um, seeing that remi reminds me of <laughs> drawing. It's good for that. Yeah. 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 I mean, a lot of, usually I draw my glimmers, but I will draw if I have something I'm worried about. Um, you know, a few days ago I was journaling cause, um, my my poor dog is is getting old and I'm worried that he's getting doggy dementia and so I journaled about that and you know it's really soothing to you do have it. little um routine times during your day when you like to journal that you set them aside well uh, what I usually do is through the day um I will noodle something in and pencil as it happens or as I think of it Mm -hmm. And then the following morning, I'll ink it and color it. Mm, a little like coffee or tea and your watercolors. And I've, I've got my tea and it's quiet in the mornings. And, you know, that's what I do before everybody else gets up. And yeah, yeah, you know. And um, say so we're curious about what kind of sketchbook you're using. I see it's got okay. that nice dot grid. Yes, these um, are from Archer and Olive are the ones that I use. Uh, there's the logo. Um, if anybody wants to try it, I have a discount code that they've given me, which is a uh, Jane Madey 10, and you can get a 10% discount. And oh. I like using the dot grid, mostly for the lettering, you know, it helps me keep my lettering straight, and it helps me lay out the page. Mm -hmm. And the paper is thick enough in these. I mean, on some of these, I've done really quite a lot of watercolor and it's thick enough that the pages don't really buckle. Oh, well, and the dots barely show up, at least, you know, with your video, they don't seem to intrude on your drawings, but they, they help really you. don't intrude. Uh -huh. they, they help me get everything lined up, but I, mm -hmm. I don't feel like they get in the way. And, you know, this, this isn't art that I plan on publishing so it doesn't matter if it's got dots in it <laughs> hmm. it looks like a and, storybook though already your journal <laughs> your beautiful words and pictures well thank you <laughs> yeah this is a good size too this is a b6 size um so it fits in my purse really easily mm -hmm. so um I thought what I would do today is I would just fill in this page. And if people feel like they want to draw along, what I'm going to do is draw my favorite art supplies. Um, Cause that's something that everybody has and everybody would be able to do if they want to. 
So fun. And I'll, I'll just remind anyone who's just joining us for our live demo with Jane Madej. She has uh, generously offered a giveaway today of her beautiful book. So if you enter the word glimmer in the chat, G-L-I-M-M-E-R, you'll be automatically entered to win and we'll be announcing the winner near the end of our demo. Um, oh, so fun. So we'll be we sketching art supplies. Okay, well, I'll get mine out and maybe I'll sketch yours. I'll see. I'll follow okay. along too, Jane. <laughs> okay. Well, what I usually do, I don't usually um, um, plan re really strictly or work from a photograph or anything like that. I kind of just draw it out of my head and I draw everything with a pencil first and then I do the ink lines and then I do the color. Mm -hmm. And so I've got some things, some ideas I was going to draw. I've got my black wing pencil and I've got watercolors and everything. So, um, and don't forget um, the lettering. Mm -hmm. And I use block lettering for one reason is because I'm not very good at lettering. And so, so that's easy to do. But it makes the lettering as a block that becomes part of the composition that, you know, that has a solid weight, that section mm -hmm. of lettering. And so you can use that to balance your page. Yeah. And you can see on this side, balance is really important. So I've got this is a pretty solid area of of the two animals. So I made a text box down here so that the weight is equal. Mm -hmm. And you can see that everything goes around in a circle. It draws your eye. So you've got this, the cat's tail is drawing your eye and it goes around. And then the marker draws your eye back up again. Mm -hmm. So the composition is all in e equal weight and it goes around, it draws your eye through the page. Mm -hmm. So you're considering so, from the beginning your organization of text and images. Yeah, so that's it's something to keep in mind while you while you draw. Mm -hmm. And if you don't feel comfortable just freehanding it, you know, woo, dive into the page. What you can do is you can draw a sketch on tracing paper, lay your tracing paper over. And then I use, um, this is graphite paper. It's got graphite uh, on one side. Uh huh. And you can use that to transfer your tracing paper drawing onto your paper. And uh, so that way you figure out all your mistakes on the tracing paper. Oh, terrific. Yeah. That's, that's the way I was trained to do it at Hallmark. So we have, I have a few questions before you dive in. Uh, we're okay. curious to be about what the clips you're using, those nice brass looking crypt, clips holding down your page. Aren't these adorable? These are from a website called Moo Boom Planner, M-O-O-B-O-O-M. And I really like them. Um, and then the other question is on the snail and the mug, it looks like there's some white lines. Are you using a gel pen? Oh, that's, this is one of my favorite thing. I don't use a gel pen. I use this. I should have showed this before. This is Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White. And it's a jar, basically a jar of gouache. And you apply it with a paintbrush. I do, I will sometimes use paint pens. I've got, um, this is Archer and Olive makes these acrylograph acrylic paint pens. And so I sometimes... If I'm somewhere where I don't have access to paints, I'll use one of these for highlighting. And then and then just one more question is, um, do you put dates on your pages um, or plan kind of a page a day or a spread a day or do they just sort of I, evolve more organically? I used to do date the pages, but now what I usually do, let's see if I can find a monthly opening page. Now I'll do a monthly opening page and then just have the pages through the months. Mm. Um, because sometimes I don't, I don't want to be too pigeonholed where it has to be a whole page. Some days I draw two pages, some days I draw half a page. And so just dividing it up by month, mm -hmm. it, it feels less uptight to me. Oh, y'all got to be gentle <laughs> with ourselves. I mean, this is about having fun. <laughs> right. I, I think that's it. I, I 
felt like if I dated the page, then that was a requirement that I had to do. And yeah, it's supposed to just be relaxing. <laughs> oh, thanks for sharing that. So are there other questions? Oh, that that's all for now. <laughs> okay. Well, so I think I'm just going to start drawing and, um, you know, sometimes I start off with the lettering. So we'll just put Let's draw some print supplies. Yippee. And then um, let's start off. I'm going to draw one of these black wing pencils, which um, that, that's a black wing pencil. I don't use the black wing pencils for drawing when I'm going to ink over it because they have a very, very dark line. I, I use this mechanical pencil with a hard lead in it because mm. then it is a, a light line, which I hope you guys can see. Can you, can you see what I'm doing? Yeah. Maybe, maybe after you do a little um, sketching, you can hold it up to the camera a little closer. We can take a peek. I can just see okay. it. Okay. Yeah. I love the erasers on um, black wings. Aren't they cool? Yeah. I've been using them since I was growing up and my mom had a box of the originals. She gave one to my brother and one box to me. Ooh. And he, he looked them up on eBay. He's like, Maria, this box of pencils is worth like $200. <laughs> I said, well, yes, they're really <laughs> expensive. <laughs> but now, of course, we can buy them again because they, they got the factory going and I just love everything Black Wing's doing. <laughs> yeah, I do too. But yeah, really good company. So now I'm going to draw, I like um, watercolors. So, oh, this is something that I sometimes take with me if I'm out, if I don't want to take the jar of the bleed proof white, this is titanium white watercolor. And you want to get titanium white because that's the opaque one. Chinese white is a mixing white and it is transparent. So that is the difference. A lot of people don't know the difference between those two things. So we'll just draw lots of tube of watercolors there. Let's make some watercolor coming out of it like that. And let's see, actually I made that water too big. I wanna draw some other stuff. Draw it like that. Um, so if you're gonna do watercolor, then what you need is a paintbrush. So we'll draw one of those. Well, now I wish I had grids in my sketchbook to play with. <laughs> I know. It, you know, it makes everything so much easier to lay it out. So I bought some graph paper um, sketchbooks too that I can use for laying out on tracing paper and then I can transfer it to proper watercolor paper. So what else do I use? I like um, colored pencils. So we'll draw one of those. There we go. And I like using markers. Let's draw a marker. The kind of markers I like to use are these um, Faber Castell brush pens. Hmm. Um, oh, I'm going to sneeze. It's all your cat's fault. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think allergies thing. are supposed to work over video. <laughs> <laughs> That's how allergic I am. <laughs> oh, my goodness. She's all okay. locked up now. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. And let's draw. I'm going to draw the journal itself. So as you're sketching, you're just loosely getting the big outline. and I'm just loosely drawing what I want, and that helps me get the composition in. Mm -hmm. And let's add a little text box down here just for fun. And you've got this just playful, illustrative style where you're not worried about, you know, looking perfect to life, but you have, um, I mean, you've got a wonderful consistency and um, how, how did it 
Did, do you feel like you went through kind of a voyage developing your voice there? I know you mentioned all your work, you know, early on making cards and working with Hallmark. And um, did did you find you experimented with some different styles? Or this is something that came more naturally to you? Well, you know, that's interesting because, um, yeah, the, the style that I do in my journal is not the style that I've done in my traditional illustration. And for a long time, you know, you start a journal or a sketchbook and it was hanging over me like this had to be perfect. And, you know, I'm used to creating art to maybe be published. And it was hanging over me that what if people saw it or it, I made a mistake and it was really inhibiting. And mm. just the daily practice has helped me break that inhibition and you know, it's okay if it's not perfect. You know, I sm smudged the color up there a little bit. You know, that's, that's okay. This is, it's about the process more than the result. And that was really hard to learn. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think that's okay. something a lot of people can relate to. And I love that feeling of having a, a sketchbook be a safe place where it we're just, yeah. it can be a space to experiment and play and, um, yeah, and it's ultimately something personal and we can share it and we can also just keep it to ourselves for our own memories and experiences and the, the practice of making it. Yeah, you don't have to show your work to anybody. I post mine on Instagram and I don't mind if it's got imperfections, but there's no rule that says that you have to show it to everybody. I have to say though, as an artist, I'm a pretty project-based person and I like giving myself little projects. <laughs> well, yeah, I do know what you mean there. And I, I do that too. Let's see, I'm really messing this up, but that's okay. That, I mean, that's really awful. <laughs> but, oh, well, that's the way it goes. It's because I'm on camera. So. We've got a question. I wonder if you might estimate, I know you said your paper weight's heavy enough for watercolor and someone's curious about what weight the paper might be. Do you think like 90 pound or a little more? Um, it's 160 GSM. So what is that in pounds? Oh, I might have to do the, ask the internet. Um, yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure. Let's see here. I'm going to say about 90 pound. <laughs> okay, that sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah, about 90 pound. I really, I wouldn't be comfortable in anything that was much thinner than that if you wanted to use watercolor. If you just want to use, um, you know, pen colored pencils or something, then that's fine. I'll just keep inking. I like these transparent rulers because you can see the drawing underneath. Oh, me too. Me too. At times I'll, I have metal ones too, but it, it's so handy to see what's underneath. Oh, there you go. I appreciate that you're just diving in with your lines too. I mean, you're just saying, okay, here's the line I'm putting down and you've got some guidance and, uh, yeah, that grid must th th help with uh, all the alignment too. What a nice, I, I haven't it, ever tried sketching on a it, grid. You're maybe yeah, it really does help. <laughs> <laughs> help line up the ruler. I, I am just absolutely terrible otherwise. And, you know, sometimes, you know, it's because I'm persnickety. If you don't want your lines to be straight or your things to line up, that's fine too. There's there's no rule that says that it has to. And so if you want to be more free form with it, that's absolutely fine. But I kind of have a hang up about it. That's like that internal voice of what we all enjoy and find ourselves attracted to. I know personally, I 
I just love little like scritchy scratchy pens. I love the feeling and like sound of pen on paper, but yeah. I can't stand charcoal or like even, even like cotton swabs, like using it gives me goosebumps. It just makes oh, really? literally, and I'm like, I, I love the way charcoal can look, but oof. And so I'm like, okay. I'm like, they're the opposite. If I'm using a scritchy scratchy pen, it sets my teeth on edge. There you go. There you go. We can be different. <laughs> yeah, that but means more art supplies to share around. I'll have to keep my, my cats and my, my pens away. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I also do, if I want to just fill in space, um, I'll add little like stars and hearts and moons and stuff like that just to kind of fill in the space. Let's hmm. add in a a paint droplet there. There's a, a term I came across some years ago called knolling, K-N-O-L-L-I-N-G, or to knoll, which is to like basically just organizing things neatly and the satisfaction of laying them out and seeing your art supplies on your page reminds me of this, of the pleasure of having things laid out and organized. <laughs> that is a great word. I didn't know that word. I might have to add that. Sometimes I do words of the day in my journal and I might uh -huh. have to add that one because I love that. Yeah. This, this weekend <laughs> I spent time organizing my colored pencils and markers and it just made me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely spring cleaning. Oh, well, you know, just putting everything in order. Hmm. So we'll fill in the lettering box here. Do we have any requests? What should I put on my journal pages in there? Oh, I need to, I need to draw something there. Oh, you do need to draw something. Um, anyone have a little request for any cute little character or something in Jane's journal? Don't make it too hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, I'm not going to draw like a tractor or anything complicated. No, you could draw a little art toolkit logo if you wanted to, to oh, pop that go. in. <laughs> oh, fox. We had a request for a fox too. Somebody wants a fox. Okay. Well, I will have to draw that in pencil first. Oh, cactus, get a cacti or your glimmer today, flowers. Oh, we're getting quite a few great ideas. Clip. Okay. We're just going to have to choose Jane. Okay, um, so let's see. Somebody said a cactus. Yep. You've got two sides there. Daffodils, turtle, me and you. <laughs> okay, oh, wow. Cactus, you're diving in. <laughs> well, let's draw. Here's some cactuses. That one's got a flower on it. And there's, there's the sand. And let's draw the moon is in the sky. And what else did you say? A daffodil? Oh, yeah. Daffodils. daffodils. Here's a daffodil. We'll draw the petals like that. Can you guys see what I'm doing? Just we just can. Okay, well, I can here, see I'll it in, and then you can see it. Okay, so here's the daffodil. Oh, so sweet! We've got daffodils that pop up in our garden, and they make me so happy every year. They just started to appear here. Our growing season is kind of behind everybody else's. And so, yes, I'm really happy that I think the snow is over. Right. And you're based in Colorado, you told me. Yeah. Yeah, so we had snow just a couple of weeks ago. So there we go. That cactus looks kind of like a pumpkin. It's a pumpkin cactus. So I will color it green and then it won't look like a pumpkin anymore. Well, you've been relatively quick getting those all, all inked in. Well, I would a say, um, <laughs> I, think I, I did a video once of um, me doing an entire journal page, just start to finish. And I think the whole process takes about an hour. <laughs> So um, I'm going to erase the pencil lines out from under there now. Okay. There we go. 
But what's your drink of choice when you're taking some time in the morning to enjoy yourself? Oh, and English breakfast tea. <laughs> I drink gallons of it. Yorkshire gold. I, yeah, I drink gallons of it. Okay, so there we go. Now, usually one of the first things I do when I'm getting ready to color is um, I like putting down a cast shadow. I think that anchors the images to the page. And mm -hmm. I want you to see, um, you know, so look at it now and it's kind of flat. And I've got a marker here. Watch how it looks after I've added the shadows. Is that like a Tombow or it looks like a just a gray marker you've got there? This is, yeah, this is just a Tombow gray marker or, you know, I've got the Faber-Castell ones here too. This one was just closest to my hand. Mm -hmm. And when I do the shadow, notice how I draw it. See this, having the shadow down here shows that the paintbrush, it's not flat. See, if, if the tip of the paintbrush was touching the paper, then the paintbrush would be at an angle. But if the paintbrush is flat, then the tip doesn't touch. And so you draw the shadow down below like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it, it instantly gives more dimension. So you can see that really it helps both anchor to the, to the page and lift it up off the page. Oh, and I'm going to interrupt one moment, just in case anyone's just joining us, that Jane is doing a wonderful giveaway during this demo of her book, How to Journal Like an Artist. So if you uh, write in the chat the word glimmer, G-L-I-M-M-E-R, um, we'll announce, what, probably in about 10 or 15 minutes, the winner. Woohoo! I feel like awareness of shadows, building the lights and darks is just such a powerful tool for sort of strengthening, it, strengthening sketches. Giving well, them a little it more is. Dimension. And I tend to be very timid about shadows. And so I that's something that I've really been working on and learning. Hmm. So that's so you can see the difference there with shadows. And so let's, um, let's see, I've got my, this is my little paint palette here, my art toolkit palette. And the brushes that I'm going to use right now, these are made by Silver Brush, Silver Ultra Mini, and they're designer rounds, and they have um, a very fine point, which I like. They hold a lot of water and have a fine point. So um, let's start with what color should I should I make the paint? Let's make it purple. Oh, I didn't squirt my palette. So yeah, let me squirt that with a little water. And are you with um, shadows inside things like um, shadows inside of the sketches, someone's wondering if you use the same Tombow pen to add a little dimension. So on, on your other page, like around your marker and the mug, you've got some shadows. Are you doing um, the paint or with a little marker on top? That like for the mug, um, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I used paint for that. I'll use whatever the appropriate color is. Mm -hmm. I mean, like this, I used the same gray marker because the marker that I drew was white. Yeah. But um yeah, from for most things, let's see what I've got here. I'll use, um, you know, well, like on the truck, I just use darker red for the shading on the truck. So my daughter moved and her poor cats uh, had a little bit of an adjustment into the new house. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so let's, we're going to make this purple. Go. Noticing and appreciating in your supplies, you didn't worry about making them like to scale. And I've been catching myself in my own sketch, wanting everything to be perfectly to scale. I think I need to let go of that. <laughs> no, yeah, you know, it's it's just for fun and just to do it down. But you know, if I 
if I painted the paintbrush and the and the tube of paint in in scale, then the tube of paint would be really teeny tiny. <laughs> So, I think of using um, reference photos, like, you know, with your daughter and, and moving, you've got the idea of a truck and a package and you're not worrying about, you know, going and drawing that specific truck maybe, or do you take yeah, that, reference photos that to help? That's just a truck. I'm trying to find, um, let's see if I can find something. I'll use a reference photo if I'm trying to draw like a specific animal and I want to get it right. Mm -hmm. um, like, well, like this one, this was a photo I took my neighbor. They had a hummingbird nest in their tree mm -hmm. in front of their house, which was just so awesome. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I used a photo to draw that to make sure I got it right. So um, what was I doing? Oh, yeah. And you can mix mediums too you don't have to do the same thing all the time you know if I want to I did that with watercolor if I want to do this part with markers mm -hmm. that's fine one thing that I like about um, these Faber-Castell markers are they're the ink in them is India ink so it is waterproof but it doesn't soak through to the other side of the page. Mm. You can tell I was pencil sketching for tomorrow's page. So where if you use um, like Tombow markers all the time, you can't go over that with watercolor because it'll lift. And if you use alcohol markers, then it soaks through to the other side. So there we go. Let's add a little shading like we were talking about. Hmm. Add a little shading here. And when it's dry, I'll add some highlights. So let's see, what do I want to draw next? Let's do this paintbrush. I appreciate the looseness you get for not having to like adhere directly to reality all the time. I'm finding myself looking closely at my art supplies and, you know, every little wrinkle or whatnot. <laughs> and, but yeah, it's, well, you know, I that's, that go. And that's something that I had to work at too, because like I said, my usual art, I don't know if I have any of it around here. Um, my usual art is very tight and detailed and accurate. I'm, I'm looking around and I don't have any that I can reach without getting up. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, this, it's, it was a process to, to get to just simplify things. Mm -hmm. And to just not worry about it. So uh, let's see what we want to do. Let's make this. Um, I've got my palette here. Let's make that blue. I'll make this a nice bright color so that the highlight will show up really good when I paint it. Um. And let's see, for the colored pencil, let's make the colored pencil green. Oh, and look at that page just coming to life. It's always so fun to add a little color. Isn't it? And even I mean, I like, the amount of simple washes or whatnot just does a, such a big difference. Yeah, and it makes it, you know, fun to flip through it. Mm -hmm. And I like working in black and white as well, but... Um, you know, for this, this is good. Yeah, it doesn't take much. 
I think I'm just going to zap this with the dryer real quick. Okay, go ahead and, and mute and uh, we can. Uh... <laughs> oh, I, should, I should mute that. Okay. Oh, oh, actually, I can't hear it. it. Must be some auto. That's amazing. Oh, I haven't turned it on yet. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you've got a great hair dryer there, Jane. <laughs> I can't get the. Um, and well, gosh, maybe while you're drying, we can announce the winner of our giveaway. Let's see. So Cole, our outreach coordinator on the back end, is going, will uh, post as soon as they hear this. And uh, we will see. And I did see a comment, too, of someone interested in a walkthrough of the colors on Jane's palette. So. Oh, OK. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. You might just have to post a little. Um, photo for us we could include in a blog post about this if you'd be willing oh, to sure. a little scan of your um your color map you're so organized do you want me to talk about the colors now or just wait and then post it later uh, why don't you give us maybe a couple of the highlights and what brand and then we can post your full map if you okay don't this scan. this is almost all um daniel smith and some of my favorites, I really like quinacridone gold because that really brings a, a glow to your colors. Either use it by itself or mix it. I like serpentine green because um, it doesn't dry flat. It's one of their colors that dries sort of mottled and natural looking. Rose of ultramarine is a really nice uh, purple color and moon glow is really good for shadows. So, um, those are some of my some of my favorites. I have a lot of earth tones like raw umber and sienna because I, I paint a lot of um, natural things like flowers and animals. So let's see. So the paintbrush, let's put some red paint. Um, that's the paintbrush is painting with red. I have a feeling we're going to finish this demo leaving me with a little art project. I'm, I'm just inking in my page. I can't quite keep up. With <laughs> <laughs> and if any of you are painting along with Jane, we love seeing what people create um, with our demos. And um, Oh, I would love that. I can post on Instagram and tag us, both of our handles, um, Instagram at Art Toolkit. Jane, what is your uh, Instagram? Mine is just at Jane Madej. At Jane Madej. Um Oh, and look, we have our winner, Darlene oh, McGrady. Congratulations. Who's, who's uh, the winner? Darlene McGrady. Oh, congratulations. So Darlene, hopefully you're still watching. And if not, if you see this later, please um, send an email. Oh, we've got it here to hello at Art Toolkit. Uh, so we can get your address and we'll be sure to um, send it to... Uh, Jane, and we'll get your uh, book shipped off to you. Congratulations. Oh, I guess I should have said, I should have specified that's U.S. only. Is Darlene in the U.S.? Oh, we'll figure out how to sort that. We'll 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 sort that out. Yeah, uh, I don't think my publisher said if it could be international. I, I think it's going to have to be U.S. only. Okay, well, Darlene, get in touch with us. If you're not in the U.S., we'll sort something out and... Um, and help take care of you. So, so we'll, we'll follow up Jane and sort that. So thank you everyone who participated and oh my goodness, your sketch is getting close there, Jane. Yeah. You know, I've been zooming along. <laughs> so um, we have a couple of questions and, and as we, um, as you finish up your sketch, maybe you can share a little bit about what you have coming up. Some folks are wondering if you're teaching locally and what are ways people can stay involved and, and learn more about all the wonderful projects you're working on, Jane? Oh, well, that is a very good question. Um, I'm building up my YouTube channel. Um, and so I'm going to be putting tutorial videos on there. And I also, um, I've got more books coming out. Where did I put my most, oh, here's my most recent one. I also do um, coloring books. And so that's, this one came out two weeks ago. And I have a how to draw book um, of cute doodles that is coming out in the fall. And it is available uh, for pre-order on Amazon. It's called Super Cute Doodles. 
And I'm trying to think what else. People might be interested, more interested in the drawing books than the than the coloring books. I, I'm not sure. Although I have heard those coloring books can be very meditative. <laughs> well, you know, a lot of people really like it. And I really like drawing the art for it. <laughs> Well, you've carved out a wonderful creative niche for yourself, Jane. Well, it's been really nice. You know, my kids are grown and often living by their own, but to be able to have a career from home, that was really just such a gift. So um, let's see, should I? Let's add some highlights so people can see some highlights. I don't know how we're doing for time. Do I need to really hurry? I don't think so. We've got about 10, 10 more minutes, but that's not a, a super hard deadline. And Okay. I might not finish the page. Also. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there we go. And so if I'm going to be doing highlights, you know, I've got the bleed proof white and oh, just... Um, mm-hmm. And just, mm. and I think a highlight as well as a shadow is equally important into making the thing come alive. Yeah, definitely. It just helps it pop off the page that much more. Yeah, and it just makes it look bright and happy. And I, I don't know, it just, it makes a difference. It makes more of a difference than you think it would. See how the difference it made there with when I've got the shadow there and the highlights there, it yeah. it really adds dimension to it. Small but significant. Uh huh. So I'm trying to paint faster. <laughs> well, folks are happy that you're painting with the white too. They were curious. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I wanted to make sure that I show a little bit of everything. So um. And a lot of times things like, you know, with the little stars and, and hearts, just, you know, kind of loosely put some color in those. Hmm. So, okay, so what color should I do the marker? Should I do it? orange i've been kind of into orange lately you need like a nice warm color something to yeah yeah i got a couple of cool colors in a row there so let's let's yeah We've got a sweet comment of your art makes them happy. And I, I, I uh, feel like you've got joy that shines through with your lines and your marks. And I think in some ways too, that kind of sweet, uh, simplicity isn't quite the right word, but it's sort of the elemental forms. And, um, you know, the, the, you've just got a real playfulness that is, is delightful, Jane. Well, thank you. I mean, that is sort of the goal. It's since I post my pages and teach what I do, it's not just about finding glimmers for myself. It's sharing those little moments of joy with, with other people. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the nice things about social media is, you know, you can be friends with people from all over the world. Oh, let's see. Got your little tiny cactus and your little beautiful daffodil. Yep. Oh, oh gosh, I'm just gonna have to. I'm gonna have to dry this real quick again. Oh, Sorry. No, no, take, take your time. Take your time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna work on. I'm gonna ink in my little my little sketch here a bit more. I've been so distracted watching you, all your your sweet line making. There we go. That's good enough. I just didn't want to put my hand on anything and smear it, which I have done before. Oh, that's disappointing. Yeah. I've done all that. You finish a painting and then you smear it or you drink your paint water or all that <laughs> stuff. 
<laughs> I have done it. Oh, Once, no. my very first job when I was only like 14, um, I was working for the school board and I had left my drawing out on my table and a bird got in during the night and pooped all over it. Oh no, that's dreadful. It was it was awful because the drawing had been so hard. <laughs> oh. I just about wanted to cry. It was just terrible. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> that's not something you can clean up very easily, too. <laughs> well, I had to start over. It was it was a pigeon got in and yeah. I mean, that's one of the less conventional ways I've heard of a uh, of a piece of art being um <laughs> piece of art mishap right there Jane <laughs> well you know I I march to the beat of a different drummer <laughs> oh well I feel like you've already given us one terrific takeaway or sort of prompt for continuing our own exploration and looking for glimmers around us of finding you know these little little things that bring us joy and I wonder if you might have any other little little nugget for encouraging us to you know keep keep going and exploring our practice any little words words of wisdom or a little prompt or something well I mean that is really it is just keep going and and don't be critical of yourself what you do is fine it doesn't have to look like anybody else's artwork you don't have to show it to anybody it's all just about having a cozy little moment to yourself and, you know, and get com whoops, get comfy and, and treat it like a little moment of self-care for yourself. Mm. Oh, I love that. Keep going, keep going and, and take that moment. I remember doing the artist way some years ago um, with Jane Cameron. What's, um, Ju Julia is Julia Cameron and just the idea of artist yeah. and treating yourself to a little artist date at home or or out in the world at a coffee shop or any any little spot a park yeah if you can surprise too oh go ahead <laughs> I was gonna say people if you can find like a local group to join I've got a group we just gosh I'm making a mess of that I'm gonna pink over that if you um can find a little group we meet on Fridays and it's a, a social thing where you can talk with other artists and there's no judgment and um, you know if you can find something like that it's it's really fulfilling mm. oh that is so sweet yeah getting a little bit of community too community yeah stuff. yeah oh that's terrific this is a mistake that I made, and I'll show you. I didn't erase my pencil line from under the daffodil, and so when I started to color it, the pencil smeared. Oh, so no. Don't be like Jane. I think we would have noticed if you hadn't told us. <laughs> well, you know, don't, don't be like me. Pay more attention to erasing your pencil before you go over it. You probably don't usually have folks bombarding you with questions as you're working on your <laughs> journals. <laughs> yeah, you know. Hmm. So that, yeah, that, okay, don't look at the daffodil. The daffodil's not great, but. Oh, it's, it's a okay. starling. <laughs> so, yeah, I think I might be able to finish this page or at least call it finished. There, are we, are we going to call that finished? We call it done. Oh, sure. We'll hold it up a little closer so we can see it with okay. the camera. Are oh, you going in for one little more highlight? I I'm gonna, I didn't do a highlight on on the black wing pencil. So oh, fun. Oh my goodness! And look what that does. There we go. Oh, I love so, it. Okay, so um, it's hard to stop, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> when do you? Well, uh, that's always a nice question. Is how do you consider something done? What are some of your cues? Uh, well, sometimes my cue is that I'm tired or hungry and just want to go do something else. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, sometimes I will go back in and work on a page the next day, but usually it kind of tells you when it's finished. It it just feels finished. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. So that's, I don't know if you can see that up close, but. Oh, look at that. Look yeah. at it all pop. 
Oh, geez. oh, it's beautiful. Oh, well, let me let me pull us back up. We can just have a minute to say okay. goodbye and, and thank everyone. Um, I'll Wee. go ahead <laughs> and uh, add, let's see here. Here's me and Jane. I'm going to pull up you next. Okay. I'm, yeah, awesome. there I am. <laughs> there you are. Oh, well, I feel like I should give you a peek. I'm not nearly as done as you are, but I have been oh, taking away you. some of my tools. <laughs> <laughs> I think that your little bag that the that the paint set. Yeah, comes yeah, in. I'm working on my little art toolkit bag and some little clips and picking up some supplies for my desk. So thanks for a little moment of art this afternoon for me. Oh, that's <laughs> great. I'm so glad. <laughs> um, and I just want to thank you so much for taking time to join us and everyone who joined us here today too. Thank you for for being here. It's so much of what um what our toolkit is about is community and creativity and the sharing and inspiration we can we can do together. Um, and um, we'll do a follow up blog post in the next day or two where um, Jane, we'd love to post your your little colors. And if you might send us a little scan of your of your beautiful page, we'll share that too with everyone. And again, anyone who's sketched along, we love seeing uh, what you've done. If you've been inspired by today, um, tag uh, at Art Toolkit and at Jane Madey. We've got those in the description of YouTube um, so we can all stay connected. So thank you, Jane. <laughs> thank you. I had a really good time and I hope people enjoyed it. Mm. Well, everybody have a great rest of your day. Thanks, everybody. Bye. <laughs>